Welcome to Wrong Time Watch. My name is Kevin, and today we're looking at the Boulder Odyssey Regatta. Now, this colorway, as of the time of recording, is not available yet, but by the time I release the video, this colorway will be available. Uh, so based off the current colorway, the price should be $1,499. And this is a new colorway, as I just briefly mentioned. So you can see it has this blue dial and then the blue sub dials and also you have the 12 o'clock sub dial which is a, a disc with the arrow here and that's pointing towards 10 and a little bit different than uh, most chronographs or any other chronographs I had in hand it is a count down timer so it goes from 10 down to 0 and also you have the blue and red here it's uh, disc it's actually kind of notched out and when I start this well, let's start this now I'll show you how the chronograph works and then I'll let it run for the remainder of the video and you'll see this disc will rotate and it'll um, reduce the size of that blue and then the red as the timer spins around there so in the description I'll leave a link to the current offering which is black or a dark blue I will try to provide a link for this one as it becomes available. And the release date for this colorway is uh, April the 14th. And uh, this video will be out after that date. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is a yachting chronograph watch with a 10 minute counter. Uh, and that's designed to help with the uh, countdown to start a regatta. Regatta. I don't know. Uh, so basically a regatta, I had to look this up, is a yacht or boat race. I'm not into yachting or boating, so I didn't know that. So hopefully I was able to teach you a little bit of something with that. Uh, so this watch is rated to 500 meters of water resistance. It does have the helium escape valve as all the Boulder Odysseys do. Now uh, this thing is a beast. It's an act absolute tank. This thing is I believe the largest and heaviest watch I have had in my possession. I had a uh, Santo Diver, which I think was a little bit larger in diameter. Um, I don't know, but I'm just going to say this is the largest watch I've had in my possession. It's it's thick, it's heavy, and it is big. But uh, it appears to be well made. I've not had that much time with it, but um, it is definitely a cool looking watch and unique and uh, I think definitely would be noticed on your wrist. So this has, and I didn't know this in the unboxing, it actually has a bi-directional bezel. Um, you know, let's let this go a little bit longer and I'll stop it and reset it. So let's stop that. This is the start stop function up here and then we'll reset it and the second hand will snap back. And uh, the last subdial is your running seconds. Yep, you see it's still going there. The bottom subdial will be a 12 hour for the chronograph. And then this center hand is your chronograph second. So yeah, let's uh, reset this. Now these are for looks. These don't uh, screw out to lock out the pushers. So anyway, let's reset it. So it snaps back there and then also you saw that disc there snapped back as well so let's get this going again and then uh, hopefully you'll see this thing may, perhaps going to the right here all right so now I forgot what I was talking okay yes bi-directional bezel it has a bi-directional bezel now, in the unboxing I just turned it this way because you know it's a dive watch but it is bi-directional which is a nice touch um, so this is a two-in-one bezel. It's a dual function. So the first function is a uh, nautical tachymeter. So there'll be this guy here. And it's measured in knots. I'm not sure. You'd have to find some kind of a, a, a waypoint that you know is a mile away. And then you would start. And then once you um, go uh, one mile, or actually probably one knot, which... I think it's, I can't remember if it's greater or less than a mile, but anyway, uh, one knot, and then you would stop it, and then that would tell you that you're going, um, let's say, 3.5 knots per hour, or perhaps 30, 
So anyway, that's how that works. And then this guy here, this is a 15 minute countdown timer. So you would set the 15, yeah, you would set the 15 on the minute hand right there. And then as the minute hand um, goes around the, the dial here, then you would know you're down to 10 minutes, five minutes and uh, so on. So that's neat, uh, dual function here. I'm not sure what you would use the yacht timer for in uh, you know everyday life, but um, you know it's more functional than a moon phase, or maybe a little more functional than the power reserve. I don't know, but yeah, it's, it's neat. I mean, it's different. It's always nice to have options. Uh, so this has the ETA value 7750 movement. Of course, you can see that we have the day and the date, and as I mentioned, this is the 10 minute. Um, countdown timer then we have the running second and then hours and then of course the chronograph second there the watch is rated to 500 meters of water resistance limited to 100 pieces uh, sign crown the case is all brushed it's a nice bracelet on here Kind of a oyster style, well, you know, oyster style bracelet, uh, but a hex, hexad oyster style, I guess I'd call it. it. Does have screw links? It was nice and easy to size. Six micro adjust. You have the fold over safety clasp, dual pushers, the milled clasp here, and it is a quick release bracelet. So you could throw it on a rubber strap. Uh, I wouldn't put it on a NATO strap. It's already uh, way too thick. Actually, this is a good reference. There's a, a Zen watch I was looking at. Um, 356, 156. Uh, Zen has a real nice but real thick chronograph. And this is about the same thickness as that. But anyway, getting off track here. Let's get this back on. Uh, for the size, it actually wears pretty comfortably on wrist. I haven't worn it extensively, but it's not too terrible for how large this watch is. Also, this is a 60-click bezel. Forgot to mention that. And I think I did mention this limited to 100 pieces. And this does have a number on the back. Somewhere. Well, let's read the rest of this. Odyssey, Regatta, Water Resistance 500. 15, 60 feet, whatever that says there. Automatic value. Sapphire. Where is that number at? Oh, there it is, right there. Number 39 of 100. So it is limited to 100 pieces, and this is a um, limited case back. So perhaps on the next version, there'll be a different case back. I'm not entirely sure on that, but you can read about it in the uh, description. And like I said, I'll leave in there the current model, and I'll try to update it to the uh, to this model here once it's available on the website. Okay, so the hands are actually a boat shaped, which I can see now, kind of a, a overhead view. Looks like a boat hull, the section through the boat hull, and also the uh, sub dials, the six o'clock and. 9 o'clock subdials have a similar look to them. Oh yeah, and up here, hopefully you can see now on the 12 o'clock subdial, all of that light blue color has been covered up. And hopefully you can see that disc shape there, almost there, almost looks like a um, horseshoe crab in a way to me. So I'm assuming those are five minute increments, each of those colors. So then this red uh, section here will be another five minute increment. So that tells me that this is originally a 30 minute uh, subdial. Yeah, neat use of the uh, existing movement. I don't think it's been customized in any way, just the, um, the way that the dial is printed and then that disc instead of a hand. All right, let's uh, zoom back out here. We'll talk about the dimensions on this beast of a watch. Oh yes, uh, 
a double dome sapphire crystal with three layers of AR coating applied to the underside. Uh, now I usually, I prefer a um, flat sapphire crystal, but dome crystals are fun to look at too. Just for me, for my eyes, a flat crystal is just a lot easier to read. You don't uh, get the distortion and you can see my studio lights here in the background. All right, so uh, the dimensions, <laughs> lug to lug with the male center link of the end link here, 59.6 millimeter. Lug to lug of the case itself, 53.2 millimeter. And then a watch diameter, which is actually the bezel diameter I measured at 45. The case, it's not so easy to measure with these pushers, but I was getting about 46, 47 millimeter. So the case diameter is actually larger than the bezel. Um, the thickness on this thing, 18.5 thick. It, uh, this crazy thickness. I think it's, it has to be the thickest watch I've ever had in my possession. 18.5 millimeter thick. And you know, for a 36 millimeter watch, which I think would fit my wrist pretty well, this, this thickness is half the diameter of that. That's just a, a crazy number to me. Lug width 22, and it tapers down to 20. And the weight on this, 237 grams. Uh, quite the hefty watch. So if you're looking for a big, uh, large, heavy watch uh, with the yacht timer function, I mean, I don't know of that many watches that actually have the yacht timer function other than the Rolex yacht timer, which, um, what are those, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000? I don't even know. This thing should be $1,500. So anyway, I wore uh, this for this video for a reason, and that is just to compare uh, kind of a typical size dive watch with uh, this chronograph here. Also, this watch weighs, I think it's 147 grams, if I remember correctly the last time I weighed it. Yeah, I mean, they both have uh, solid bracelets, um, kind of similar construction. So Mariner is rated to, was it 300 meters? Yeah. And this thing is 500 meter water resistance. Quite a bit thicker as well. Such a large watch. But it's a fun watch and it's unique and it's different. So that's great. And then here it is compared to my Seiko SKX, another typical type of dive watch. Now this has hollow links, so I didn't really want to compare the weight of this to the Odyssey here. A 42 millimeter versus a 41 on the Rolex there. All right, let's uh, get this one on wrist. Also, we'll zoom in on the dial again. You can see that top sub dial, the red is almost all gone there. And now you see where it's starting to say start there. So, yeah, let's get this on the wrist and then we'll check out the loom. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out and I really appreciate it. Also like the video if you liked it and leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of this <laughs> massive watch. All right, here it is on my six and a half inch wrist and I have a 52 millimeter wristband. Actually, I'll show you the links real quick. I had to remove six links. Again, just a solid hex style link here. And uh, they are screwed links, so nice and easy to get on and off. And now you can see the Boulder logo there. Definitely not going to fit under a sleeve very well unless you have uh, very loose sleeves. Probably could loosen this up just a little bit, but um, there we have it on my wrist. 
All right, let's zoom out here and then we'll check out the loom here in a moment. I'll, um, I think I'll throw in both the Submariner and the uh, SKX for comparison. But the speaking of loom, this has Super Luminova on the hands and also Super Luminova and the bezel insert. And that does look to be a ceramic bezel insert. I did not see that on the website. I mean, the it doesn't look, I mean, it looks big, but considering I have a 52 millimeter wristband, six and a half inch circumference, and uh, the male portion of the end length is almost 60, and then this here is 53, it, it doesn't look as bad as you think it would from, from the numbers, from the specs. So it's always nice to get a watch on wrist before you purchase or watch videos. So yeah, uh, we'll pause the video and uh, be right back with the loom. All right, just a quick look before I get to the loom portion. I have them all laid out here side by side. So just another uh, kind of quick look here at the size comparison between the uh, Submariner 124060, the Boulder Odyssey Regatta Chronograph, and then the Seiko SKX009. All right, there we go. SKX on the left, obviously the boulder in the middle and then uh, Submariner on the right. Um, the loom is not that great on the boulder, but um, there's really not that much uh, loom applied to the hands and the indices. So uh, overall, not too bad for a chronograph. It's not as bright by eye as what I'm seeing on the screen here. All right, as always, thank you for taking the time and thank you for watching.